Hi folks, this is Darren. And Dakota. And Dakota <laughs> with My RV Works. Uh, we look kind of rough because we spent the night in our service trailer. We're over on the Kitsap Peninsula serving a lot of customers' needs and being their guide as we navigate through some of these repair jobs for them. And um, so, yeah, we look kind of rough. We were not going to do a video, but we came across something very unique that we don't have any videos on. And I wanted to share with you what we've, what we've come across and what we found. Okay. This one happens to be a Dometic furnace, but it does not matter whose furnace when I tell you what the problem is. A lot of times if I get a service call for a furnace, I'll just have them turn it on and you can tell a lot just by listening and smelling. Just by listening and smelling, uh, I'm, I can determine what's wrong with your furnace. So by listening and smelling, um, here's, what you're, here's what should happen, okay? So when the furnace starts, the fan's gonna come on. I don't know how long, but let's say about 15 seconds maybe 30, but the fan should blow. That's your pre-purge. And during your pre-purge, you're basically purging out all of the, the combustibles before it opens up the gas valve. Then during that pre-purge stage, what you have happening is a sale switch is going to be made. So I'm, the, the furnace is counting to, to 15, one Dakota, two Dakota, three Dakota, four Dakota, or maybe one, one furnace, two furnace, three furnace. The, the, the furnace is counting and um, it's looking to make sure that the sale switch was made. Now, let me, let me pause for just a second. On that sale switch, it needs to have been in an open state to start with, okay? That's very important. How, do, how does the control board know that if the sale switch was stuck, okay? So the sale switch needs to be in an open position and when you energize this, it needs to see it close. If your sale switch is stuck, then the control board never saw it open and close. Okay, so that's kind of important when you're troubleshooting these things. Um, so the control board needs to see that the furnace, the sale switch has changed states. Um, it's also going to make a path through your high limit thermostat, which is on these, it's in the front, on some of your suburbans, it's going to be in the back. Um, now, the high limit thermostat and the sale switch are part of the exact same circuit. Okay. Um, look at your schematic. On this one, the wires are blue. Suburbans, they are black and white. Um, sometimes they'll change the colors to white to blue. Look at your schematic, but it's a circuit. It's going to go from your thermostat through your sale switch, through the high limit thermostat on the furnace, and then into your control board. It's going to do all of those things. If all of that comes back correctly and you're listening and smelling, you're sitting out at the exhaust port, you can tell everything from this exhaust port. I'm listening and smelling at this point right here. And in my mind, I'm visualizing that that's what it's doing. And after about 15 seconds or so, you're going to hear a click, which is this gas solenoid. We're going to be talking about him a little bit more in, in a minute. You're going to hear a click sound, which is these solenoids clicking. Okay. And then you're going to hear a tick, 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 tick sound. Okay. That is the igniter. Where's my igniter? Where's my igniter? Right here. That is this igniter striking an arc over my burner head. What I might do is bring you guys in a little bit closer, but like I said, I've got a lot of other videos. Just find the playlist for all the furnace videos and you'll find all my furnace videos and we'll do this. Um, where I'm going with this one though, is with this, I'm sniffing and I'm listening. So um, we heard the fan start. We heard the click sound. We heard the ticking, tick, 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 tick sound. I did not smell LP gas coming out, okay? And we got no ignition. Now, the only thing that can be, folks, is not the sale switch, because if the sales, everybody, everybody picks on the poor sale switch, it's a poor sale switch. And yes, we do get enough calls on sale switches, but that's not what happened here. If this thing makes a click and makes a ticking sound, we're, we're beyond all that. We've made it through that circuit. And now I'm actually trying to ignite. If the sale switch wasn't working, I would never try to ignite, okay? So if we hear that click sound and the ticking sound, but we have no ignition, smell for LP at this point, okay? If you do have LP at this point, then the problem is you're not getting ignition, which could be a problem with the igniter here, which might lead to the board. I've got another video specifically on that. Go watch the playlist. But on this one, we did not smell LP. If we do not smell LP, then the only thing that could be not the only thing, but it's highly probable it is the gas valve. Now, we've already got this taken apart. We've already figured it out. And that's when Dakota and I decided, you know what, let's make a video because this might help some folks. Now, this is your gas valve. So gas is introduced here through your LP line. It energizes these. I have a redundant solenoid. Okay. And these go on a little connector that unplugs and they're grounded. There's a ground spade right there. 
12 volts is energizing it. Gas goes in here. I energize my solenoid, gas flows through, and I squirt to the orifice. Now, I wanted to talk about this orifice real quick because I have seen spiders that'll make a nest in there and clog the orifice. The orifice could be clogged, okay? Orifice could be clogged. In this case, it's not. It's wide open. So then the next trick is if you've seen me with my little 12 volt batteries, um, you can take, I'm not going to do this for time because we've already wasted enough time. Um, <clears throat> this is just a 10 foot cord plus and minus on my battery pack, 12 volt battery pack, plus and minus here, alligator clip to here, haven't I engaged my solenoids? So now my solenoids would be engaged and then I get a can of office air. Where's my can of office air? I think I may have put it back. Oh, here it is, okay. Can of office air and with these energized, let me just do it real quick. So there's that. They are redundant, so it is important that you connect them both. It won't work with just one. It's one of your safety features. So there we have that. 12 volt battery, minus and plus. Listen for the click. Hear that? That's me. Okay. Now, with an engaged, I'm going to blow a can of office air. I don't care whose it is. I'm going to blow this in here. I should feel air coming out the bottom, shouldn't I? And we're not feeling any air flowing through there. Therefore, it's clogged. Why could it be clogged? Um, it could be clogged because the orifice is clogged. Maybe the solenoids aren't good. So if you do Ohm's law, there we go. On the front of the sticker, it's going to say 12 volts DC 0.5 um, amps. Do Ohm's law. It's going to tell you each solenoid should be 40 ohms. Okay. So I expect 40 ohms of resistance on each solenoid. So I'm going to put my meter in ohms readings. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll just tell you what it is. Polarity does not matter. I'm going to go to negative on my solenoid. I'm going to touch that. And what do I get? I get 11.38 ohms. That's not 40. Okay. I'm going to keep my same ground reference because they're bust together. I'm going to go to this one and I get, I get 39.8 ohms. Okay. So I have basically a bad solenoid here, don't I? Um, and uh, you don't need to replace a $200 gas valve, just replace a $20 solenoid. So what I'm going to do is I have two new solenoids here. This is something that I stock in my service trailer. And we're going to check both of those. Um, I put the spade terminals on them already. I was just getting ready to connect all these. I got 39.1 right there. And on this guy, 39.5. So I'm going to replace both of these solenoids. Okay. So what's the moral of the story? Um, if you are getting the fan starting, if you are getting the ticking sound, but you're not smelling LP, that points everybody to the gas valve. So you can use, you can energize these. I, I cut, I cut these to check individual solenoids. I suspected one was bad. Um, and so I had to cut these, not a big deal. Here's one I cut. Here's one I'm going to replace it with. No big deal. Um, and sure enough, I found the culprit. It was a bad solenoid. And then we're going to put two new solenoids on and then save the day and people can have some heat. So, um, what, let me, I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is, is take the screw, put this apart, put it back together again. And then we're going to come back to the video. We'll do our test where we squirt some air through it. And, um, if we feel air, which I expect we will, then we'll, we'll actually see if we can fire it off. Okay. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, folks. So basically what I've done is, um, connected my ground and my, um, power. Now be advised, the grounds are going to be the inner and the leads are going to be out there. That's what the schematic states. And I remember going through school, they, they mentioned that, that that's how it's supposed to be. Also, this guy down here is a tamper-proof screw. I've got a whole tamper-proof screw kit. So that wasn't a problem for me, but uh, be advised that that's a tamper-proof screw. And these spade terminals, the female spades here are uh, a little bit smaller than your average. Okay. So all stuff we stock, but just be advised that if you're going to go about this, you do need a little smaller spades and you have a tamper proof thing here. So here's a test. Uh, we've replaced both of the solenoids. If I'm going to do one, I'm going to do them both. Um, it's your ground is on. And, um, so basically I'm going to give 12 volts here and, um, the test, all right, Dakota, come feel this. Tell me if you confirm. Okay. Now what we're going to hear is we're going to hear a click. There's our click. Okay, now I'm going to blow a can of office air through here. Tell me if you feel it. You do? Okay. 
I confirm. Yeah, it even, it even changes its pitch when I do that. So, so that's what was wrong with this thing is the solenoids had failed. And I don't know that I had a video on that yet. So um, you don't need to see me putting this thing all back together, but I just hoping that that added value to you. So I wanted to keep this as a short video on purpose because uh, I've got a lot of other furnace videos, but this was one where I wanted to show you, I've got another furnace video where it turned out to be the gas valve. Uh, this one, it turned out to be the solenoids. So if your furnace is trying to start, you hear the click, you hear the ticking sound, but you do not smell LP fuel coming out of your exhaust. The suspect is this. Okay. And in this instance, it could either have been the valve, a clogged orifice or the solenoids. And in this instance, it was a solenoids. So if this added value to us, give us a thumbs up. That's how you could thank us. Um, so our purpose in life is to make happy campers and happy campers say my RV works. So this is Darren in Dakota from Silverdale, Washington, signing off until the next video. Thanks for watching.